Yeah, let's go over some Spurs news and notes and then ask, is Castle the point guard of this rebuild? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs beat writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. And as always, we appreciate you all subscribing to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcasts, iTunes, YouTube. What else you got there? Oh, yeah, I got the Ken's 5 Plus app. I mean, so many other platforms. Pick them. We're probably there and all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now. Create an account. Use code Locked On NBA for 20 bucks off. Your first purchase terms apply. Hey, what are we talking about today? You can see it on your screen for some quick Spurs news and notes and then bring in our guest, Jack Thompson, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. We're going to be asking the question, is Castle the point guard of this rebuild? And then later ask if CP3, it's weird for me to say that, right? Chris Spurs, Chris Paul, is he uh, a starter on opening night? We're going to discuss that and more right here on Locked On Spurs. Let's catch up with some Spurs news and notes that you might have missed. And we start off with pair rookies. Yeah, Harrison Ingram, Stephon Castle, they got the San Antonio experience. They took a ride on San Antonio's famous River Walk. Yeah, they took a cruise. For, y'all, for those of you who don't live in San Antonio, it's just a big, big river that winds through downtown San Antonio, cuts across, and uh, colorful, you know, basically it's like Christmas lights every single day, just all in the trees. But they got a chance to go ahead and take all that in, starting them getting used to being a member of this city, uh, being in San Antonio. From the looks of things, it looks like they had a great time. Uh, you can see uh, Stefan Castle's family was there with him. All in all, it looked like a great time. Hopefully that'll feel they're welcome being a member of not just the Spurs, but of this city. In other Spurs news, Jeremy Sohan. Yeah, he right now he's with uh, Team Poland. They're getting ready for their Olympic run. Uh, but he had a chance to talk with FIBA, a little social media engagement, and he gave out his starting five, well, his all-time Spurs starting five lineup. He picked Tim Duncan, no-brainer. Tony Parker, sure. David Robinson, solid pick. Uh, who else did he pick? Mono Ginobili, very good pick. But he picked Kawhi Leonard as well. All-time starting five. Now, I get it. Some Spurs fans are, you know, they're still not over how Kawhi left the the city and this team and left them in shambles for a while. But he picked Kawhi Leonard. He put him on that list. Now, I thought, okay, what other players could he have replaced with? Sean Elliott would have been a good pick. If he really dug deep and stuck to just basketball, Alvin Robertson would have been a good one. What about Captain Late? Uh, but uh, if you want to see uh, Jeremy uh, reaction to, you know, him giving out his top five all-time Spurs starting five, go to Ken'sFive.com slash Spurs. He also said he's not picking any of the current players on the roster. So he's playing it safe. So he doesn't pretty much tick off his uh, current uh, fellow teammates there. And other Spurs news, Kelton Johnson. He is out in China right now as part of his, uh, well, for those who don't know, he's a global ambassador for a sneaker company out there. It's called Kualdin, I believe it's called. It basically sounds like Jordan, but it's like Chow Don. And uh, he has a sneaker line with them. He also has a new uh, clothing line as well. But he's out doing the rounds in China. Uh, he did a three-on-three game. He did uh, pretty much a kind of like a dunk fest, uh, just dunking all over would-be defenders out in China. It looks like he's having a great time. He's making tea. He's going to the Great Wall. Just really enjoying his offseason. Of course, doing what he has to do, promote his brand, that being uh, his sneaker liner. I actually own a pair of sneakers. I've been thinking about doing a kind of a Cullen Johnson sneaker review. Uh, they're very, very nice. But, you know, I think I might table that for another episode of Locked on Spurs. But that's what Kelvin Johnson is up to right now. In other Spurs news, I had a chance to ask quickly to Stefan Castle about uh, him not well, basically being on the Spurs radar since high school. Now, it's up. The article, full article is up there right now at kensfy.com slash Spurs. Go ahead and read it uh, from him not being aware that the Spurs were targeting him at such an early age. But he went on to talk about you know, what it meant to him and, and what has a really good article. It's right now. It's over at kensfy.com slash Spurs. Uh, please go check it out, uh, you know, because, you know, the summer Spurs are about to take off. Castle's a part of that to Sacramento then Las Vegas. So. Hopefully, and thank goodness I got a chance to speak to them, even if it's just a quick question. Speaking of the Summer Spurs, they're in practice right now. They're getting ready for the Summer Leagues, plural. 
Sacramento and Las Vegas. City Sissoko said after uh, practice one or summer Spurs practice day one that he will play. Uh, he hopes that he's playing uh, all the games out in the summer leagues. He did admit that he was dealing with a major knee injury that really hampered him last season. He said he kind of started feeling it in May and that he couldn't recover fast enough. That apparently, according to him, his knee swelled up and he had minor surgery to clean it up. But he's he's ready to go. He said he slimmed down. He lost some weight. So he's one of the guys I'm definitely looking forward to seeing out in uh, the summer leagues. Uh, Coach Kenny Trevino will be leading the charge for the Spurs. All in all, it looks like the summer Spurs are getting ready to flex what they got, including Castle and Ingram. It's going to be great to see some San Antonio Spurs action, at least summer league version, uh, very, very soon. All right, there's your quick Spurs news and notes. When we get back, we're going to have Jack Thompson, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star, we're going to be discussing if Castle is the right point guard for the rebuild and then whether or not CP3 should be the starting guard or when it comes to opening night, opening tip of the new season. That's the next right here on Locked on Spurs. But first, I want to talk to you about Game Time. You want to go to GameTime.co right now. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster, easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Look, we all have those events we want to go to, right? Sporting events, theater events, whatever it is. And you need a ticket, you want to go to Game Time right now. They got it all. That app is very easy to use, user friendly. Uh, as I mentioned, that lowest price guarantee. You also got event cancellation protection, job loss protection. They got it all. Speaking of those last minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, etc. Flash deals, you can save even more with an exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. The purchase is even covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that game time ticket coverage. Go right now. Go to Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, use code Locked on NBA for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. You want to go to Locked on NBA. Well, that's the redeem code. So there you have it. So we'll give you that again. Go to Game Time right now and get that code Locked on NBA. L O C K E D O N N B A. Twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Jedi uses the Force. To subscribe to Locked on Spurs, pass on what you have learned. And look who is back, everybody. Jack Thompson. Follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. He is back to talk all things. Stefan Castle, CP3. We're going to get to all that and more. By the way, are you content? Are you okay now? Castle is a spur. You good? You good? Oh, yeah. Dust oh, settled? Yeah. yeah. Stoked. So, yeah, I am too. Yeah, especially yeah, yesterday's show, Locked On UConn host came on and told us a story about how Castle was involved in play where he got knocked down and an opposing player tried to help him up and he slapped the opposing player's hand out of the way, had nothing to do with it. I like that dog in him, Jack. Oh, yeah, same, same. <laughs> All right, so what are we starting off with, Jack? Well, you can see on your screen, we're going to be asking about Castle's future with the team. Now, we know it's set for now. We know he's just a rookie. We know he has played a minute of an NBA game. But the Spurs are in the middle of a rebuild. And part of the rebuild is looking for a point guard. The Spurs, as of now, look like they may have gotten it. But big picture here, Jack. Do you believe Castle is the point guard for this rebuild? I mean, yeah, I, I, I do think so. I mean, for one, we, you, we just took him in the draft. So he's obviously an integral part of, you know, what we believe the team will look like moving forward. And two, he's just, he's got all the intangibles you want in your franchise point guard. Like you said, he's a straight up dog. He's got that dog mentality, offense and defense. Uh, he, we've seen him, you know, at UConn handle the ball as the point. He's good in the pick and roll. Very good at attacking downhill off the dribble. He's got a very good uh, touch around the paint. He's got good feel for the game. Uh, yeah, he passes the ball really well. I don't think there's any indication that's saying that he's not the point guard of the future of the rebuild. Now, 
yeah. whether he's, you know, the one or the two for the team, you know, yeah. down the line, that's the question that is yet to be answered. But I definitely mm-hmm. think that Castle is going to be one of the guards of the future for there this rebuild, whether that's yeah. the point guard or the shooting guard. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because the lockdown host uh, for UConn, he came on I said yesterday and I asked him the same question. Is he a what guard? Is he just a guard or is he a point guard? Uh, the lockdown UConn host made it very clear that he is a point guard, that he can do it, that it's in him. Uh, my thing is that, A, it's too soon to tell if he's a point guard of the rebuild. Look, not good, nothing happens, but Spurs been through this. You know, Josh Primo, he was seemingly the, the point guard moving forward. They built around him. It was advertisements of him. He was introduced during new advertisers for himself. Well, I mean, it was all good. And then obviously that's a whole different circumstance, what he did allegedly off the court. But that went down. Now, we just don't know how a player pans out into the NBA. All signs are pointing that he will succeed in the NBA. But we were thinking of comps we talked about this before you know comp to drew holiday you know that's and you know i think he's probably drew holiday right now here's the thing do the spurs need a drew holiday or do they do they need an sga type player for the rebuild hmm that's tough um yeah i mean between the two if you were picking obviously you'd want sga he's oh yeah probably the best guard in all of the nba right now so it's tough, though, because Wimby, SGA doesn't have anything like Wimby on his team. He, you know, Wimby is going to be the dominant force on the offensive end, no matter who we bring in, just because he's such a mismatch nightmare. So I think, I mean, of course, between the two, I would take SGA. That's, you know, he's a good defender in his own right as well, and he's probably the most crafty scorer in the NBA. So I think. We need an SGA. Wimby does definitely need that second punch behind him, but there's nothing Mm -hmm. to be, you know, there's nothing wrong with him, you know, panning out to Mm -hmm. be a Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, we saw the impact that he had on this Celtics team. Like, you know, like I said in the previous episode, it took the Celtics seven years and then they added Drew Holiday, you know, the guard that seemed to be the missing piece. And suddenly they win the championship after a stellar finals performance, you know, Mm -hmm. from Drew Holiday. He he was killing them in that in that uh, in the finals. So that's a tough question, whether we want, you know, the defensive versatility with some offensive prowess in Drew Holiday or if we were looking for a straight bucket getter and, you know, Shea Gilgis Alexander. I think we really need a, a blend of the two is Mm -hmm. what we really need Castle to become into. He doesn't need to be a guy that goes out and scores, you Mm -hmm. know, 30 points a game. He doesn't need to be that Shea Gilgis Alexander in that aspect. But we are going to need a guard that has offensive firepower. There's no doubt Mm -hmm. about that. You can't succeed all the way to an NBA championship without a guard like that. So I think, you know, the perfect answer in the perfect world would be a, a, a blend of the two. Yeah, I, I think as of now, he is the uh, point guard of the rebuild. I, I'm getting vibes of Tony Parker, uh, you know, came in and, you know, is he going to be part of this, you know, run with TD and, you know, Speedy Claxton, Antonio Daniels. And I do predict that the Spurs will hand over the, the keys to everything at the point guard spot to him. Look, they tried to experiment with Sohan. What's that stopping with Castle at? Uh, point guard too. You know, I know there's some debate whether he's just an off guard or, sh- or a point guard, but I think that will happen. I, and also think the Spurs will test him at the at the off guard spot too. Why not? You got nothing to lose, everything to gain. Is he just like they did with Wimby? All right, Wimby, you want to float around, play the four, go for it. Nah, well, you know, put you at the five. Look at that; it works better. And I can see the same situation for Castle ultimately lending to the point guard spot. Adding CP3, I help. I think will help him develop in to a uh, point guard with the tricks of the trade, the veteran savviness. Maybe he'll learn that faster, but do we need to pump the brakes? Do we, are we going to, what basically I'm trying to get at is Jack, when do you expect castle to click? Like when we clicked right, I guess right before all-star break or right around that time, it clicked, he got going and watch out, you know, NBA moving forward. Do you think castle will click immediately? Or considering the position he plays, he's going to need time to cook. 
I think he's definitely going to come in right away and he's going to make an impact. I think, especially on the defensive end, he's right away. He's going to come in and, you know, take the challenge of guarding the best guard and all that. I think immediately he's going to have that impact. Now, like you said, you know, coming in as a point guard, definitely a much more of a learning curve than coming in as a big man, especially one who's, you know, seven foot five and can shoot threes. Yeah. But um, Castle, I, there will definitely be a learning curve, and he's going to have some some great highs and some great lows. There's no doubt about that. But I definitely see, you know, in the traditional Spurs fashion, by uh, All Star break or trade deadline, whether moves have been made or not, I definitely think Castle it will really start to click in in the second half of the season. That's typically how it goes. Um, mm-hmm. but I think we're going to see a lot of good things early on in the season. So there will definitely be some traction, you know, going on, but I think after the break, he's really going to hit the ground running and start to take over that, that role yeah. on whatever his future role is with for the Spurs. I think that starts to emerge, you know, after the, the all-star break. Yeah. And look, it's obviously way too soon to tell if he is the point guard of the rebuild. You know, you, you're hoping he pans out, you're hoping he succeeds, but we've seen other highly touted names and drafts come out and just fall flat, uh, and uh, it could happen. But all signs are pointing to the fact that he will succeed in the NBA, whether that's on the defensive end, which I think he'll make an immediate impact. I mean, seriously, Jack, how many times did we see opposing players last season just have the career nights from the three line? I'm mean, mm-hmm. serious. It was just like Trey Young, sure. You know, uh, Steph Curry, yep, there you go. You know, but... So I think he'll help in that uh, department. But offensively, I think that's where he'll probably need time to develop. Uh, he openly said that his shot is not broken at all. He said it doesn't need to be reconstructed. It just needs some fine tuning. So I think the Spurs will handle that. So I think ultimately we could start seeing him get going around the All-Star break. As you mentioned, that's where the point is, where players nowadays kind of start getting clicked. It also helps too, Jack, that he's playing in an era where it's you know, defense is what, like last on the list in the NBA? Hey, just have fun, you know, go score. Yeah. So I think that'll help him too. Uh, here's the thing, though. You mentioned a good point. With Wimby there uh, behind him, and by the way, he's very excited he has Wimby uh, to uh, clean up his mess on the perimeter. Do you think that's going to en- only enhance his game? Because that's a lot of spacing. And you know teams are going to dare him to take shots from the perimeter, considering that's the biggest knock on him entering the NBA. Yeah, I think, you know, the spacing is definitely going to help bring him along quicker. Without someone, you know, right up in your grill, you're definitely going to be more comfortable on the offensive end. So I definitely think the spacing that is going to be created by having Wimby on the court is going to allow Castle to to thrive. And, yeah, they're going to dare him to shoot open shots. And, of course, you know, he's going to miss some. He's going to make some. That's just how the ball rolls. But I think – you know, for opposing guards to try and guard Stefan Castle, like one, a point guard trying to guard him is going to be extremely difficult. I mean, he's six six with a huge wingspan. He's going to be mm-hmm. able to bully ball smaller guards, mm-hmm. and they're going to have a, a tough time just keeping him out of the paint. So I think that spacing, while it's going to, I think, help his shooting ability, but it's also, I think, going to help, you know, him become that point guard where he can get into the paint easier because there's so much mm-hmm. space and then he can create out of it with what, you know, the opposing defense gives him, whether that's a shot or making mm-hmm. the right pass, you know, all those different variabilities that come with it. So I think um, with all that spacing that Lin- that comes with the NBA, especially with Wimby on the court with him, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to uh, tend to, I think, advance his offensive mm-hmm. um prowess i suppose for lack right. of a better word off the top of my head i think he's going to thrive with that much spacing because that's definitely something he's never seen in his life yeah also too you look the, the spurs are putting him in a position where he can only develop perhaps at a faster pace you have cp3 there great mm-hmm. you know because they call him the point god yeah um, he's gonna you know he's a dog that cp3 so he's gonna probably give add more dog to castle's dog in him Mm-hmm. He, you know, let's not forget Trey Jones is there too. So Trey yeah. Jones is technically a veteran. He is a veteran of the NBA, a veteran of the Spurs. Uh, he'll be there to help guide him as well. And of course, Popovich on the sideline too. Look, we know how Pop handles point guards. Ask Tony Parker. Now it's not the same anymore. 
Uh, but nevertheless, you can expect Popovich to kind of really be on him more so considering the position he plays. So I think Castle's in a perfect position to become the point guard of the rebuild. We'll just see if he pans out. But I, I have no doubt that he will become that. I don't expect him to be dropping triple doubles, you know, left and right. But I think he'll be doing a lot of the good stuff that will help the Spurs get the win. You need a lockdown defender. It's crunch time. You need to slow down the opposing team's best perimeter player. Castle wants that. Uh, you need mm-hmm. some outside shooting. Castle's going to knock that down with Wimby there to give him spacing. And uh, he's played with Donovan Klingon. He's played with a big man before. He's familiar with that now. Klingon, Wimby, yeah, that's a big difference. But you know, that'll help his, I guess, his trying to fit in seamlessly with the Spurs in that position. I think he's in a good spot to become oh, yeah. the the point guard of the rebuild. We'll just see how it pans out, though. But, Jack, I, I think it's all thumbs up now. We're going to get a – very soon, we're going to get a quick look at what he looks like at the Summer League, too. Oh, can't wait to see him in Summer League. For yeah, sure. Gonna Cannot be, wait. That's, that's gonna be, I want him, having, and, him and Sissoko to dominate. I'm so yeah. excited to watch both of them. Glad you brought up so Sissoko, man. I think, I think everybody's sleeping on him. There's something about there. And I, yeah. I think if the Spurs unleash him, Next season, watch out. You know, it could be a nice little X factor the out the entire season. Because look, he was playing in the G League and he was tearing it up, but he hasn't gotten that consistent NBA time. We'll see what he does with that. But you know, that's for a whole other show. But as far as Castle is concerned, yeah, right now I got the stamp of approval. I believe he is the point guard of the rebuild. All right, when we get back, we're gonna be shift gears. How about another point guard? It's weird for me to say this. Spurs Chris Paul. That is weird to say, but We're going to be discussing Spurs' Chris Paul and whether or not he should be the starter on opening night. And we're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Jack Thompson. Jack, we need the three goggles, man. You haven't done the three goggles yet. There you go. Give him a follow on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. I heard you have uh, some point guard skills on the court as well. Is that true? Yeah, I'm I'm more of a a combo guard. I would not describe my game as a point guard. I'm definitely a scoring shooting guard, but I can I can dish the rock here and there. You're not a black yeah, you're not I, a black hole, are you with the ball? No, definitely not a black hole, but you know, I'm gonna get my shots up. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Jack demands his touches. But mm-hmm. uh hey, speaking of point guards, uh again, weird to say San Antonio Spurs very own Chris Paul. Uh, is uh, you know, on board, uh, at least for a year. Who knows? I hey, I'll take it if it's a year, Chris Paul. Sure, this rock and roll. And if he wants to go elsewhere afterwards, so be it. But thanks for your tutoring the young Spurs, nevertheless. You, you know, there's there's as of right now, there's a log jam at point, I can't believe a log jam at point guard when that wasn't last year. There's Chris Paul, there's Stefan Castle, you know, pop probably, there's Trey Jones, and there's Blake Wesley. So there is four point guards on the roster now. Now, everybody's uh, liking Castle right now. He's the new toy in the toy box. We get that. I understand that. But CP3, he's earned his stripes. He's paid his dues and then some. Do you think he should be the starting point guard opening night or do what he did in Golden State, come off the bench and uh, be a comedy force for the second unit and teach the young kids on the bench and just watch and observe? Or should that role be given to Castle? I think it's tough. I, I, I wouldn't have him not starting because of Castle right away. If anything, it's going to be Trey, Yon, Trey Jones because of his you know familiarity with right. the team already and running the show. He, you know, he knows everyone on the squad and their spots they like to score it and all that stuff that comes with being You're a lead right. point guard. But I do think that Chris Paul should should run the show from the jump. I think it'll be beneficial for Castle. Okay. Uh, I think Castle needs to learn. You know, he needs to watch Chris Paul and uh, see how it, what it takes to be an elite point guard in this league, how to run the show in an elite level, and just everything that, the type of guard we need Castle to become demands from his teammates. I think that's going to be the biggest impact that Chris Paul has. I think it might come off the court with his demand of the 
of the t- of his teammates around him and you know how he's going to push everybody to get better. I can tell you one thing, the defense that we saw last year from our perimeter players is something that Chris Paul is not going to stand for whatsoever. Chris Paul is not going to stand for the laziness. He's not going to stand for, you know, taking shortcuts. Everything about Chris Paul's game is, you know, playing the game the right way, respecting the game, giving everything you got. And I think that's really going to rub off on the on everybody on the team, not just the young guys, because quite frankly, everybody on the team is a young guy. So especially compared to Chris Paul. So I think Chris Paul coming in and starting is going to be more beneficial for the entire team. And I think it's going to be beneficial for Castle to see how an elite point guard really runs the show. And I think, you know, Chris Paul with Wimby in the pick and roll is going to be insanely beautiful to watch. So I think that's definitely another reason why we see Chris Paul get the starting nod even comes, you know, opening tip. Are are we going to get Lob City in San Antonio? Is that what you're saying? Are we getting Lob City in San Antonio? I think we're going to get a version of it for sure. There's yeah. not as many lob options as there were in, yeah, yeah, you know, in yeah. LA, I, I throw but... in, I throw in Sohan, obviously Wimby yeah. and Vassell. Vassell. Yeah. Sohan, yeah. Sohan definitely can go up and get a lob, but yeah. not like yeah. Blake Griffin could. So, oh, no, no. But, no, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we're definitely going to get a variation of Lob City in, in, uh, in San Antonio. And one thing that Chris Paul, you know, incredible in the pick and roll and especially with the law, but he's never had a big that I can remember Mm-mm. that can stretch no, no, the floor I, out like Wimby can. Would, so the pick and pop oh, is going to be an floor, yeah. insane aspect of that pick and roll game mm-hmm. too. So I definitely think the pick and pop is going to be fantastic with Chris Paul being able to craft his way into the paint and hitting Wimby with some yeah. beautiful over the shoulder behind the back pass nice. for three. Yeah. I think that's going to be a huge implement to the game as well. So extremely yeah. excited about that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did Chris Paul play with Dwight Howard in Houston? Did they cross paths there? They might have that. for a season. Maybe, I'm, yeah, I don't really yeah. remember. But don't remember, even but then, Dwight Howard even then, was, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was a shell. He was a shell of himself. Yeah, but you know, you know, I, I, I think what's going to happen is you'll see CP3 start. But I think, and I would hope, that the keys are turned over to the kids soon. I think Trey Jones would be okay coming off the bench. The odd man out right now is Blake Wesley. That's he is definitely the odd man out. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Wesley maybe you were in a new uniform next year. Wouldn't be surprised. But nevertheless, um, yeah, I, I think there's going to have to be a shift. Very Tony Parker ish rookie Tony Parker. It was I think was it Antonio Daniels. I think it was Antonio Daniels. Mm-hmm. Antonio Daniels, and then midway through the season, the keys are turned over to. Uh, Tony Parker, I think that could happen here. You have CP3, CP3, then the keys going to be turned over to Castle. And who knows? Maybe the Spurs are going to do CP3 a solid. They go, like, hey, you know, why don't we just ship? Thank you for your help for half a season. Hey, Boston's about to win another title. You want to go try? Or, hey, Dallas needs some help. You know, I could see them maybe doing something like that. Um, because I mean, again, you then you, you, you gave the kid a half a season, Castle, that is, of training under uh, Chris, Chris Paul, and, and away we go. But, yeah, I just hope that they the Spurs take off the training wheels as soon as they can. Training wheels being CP3, the bike mm-hmm. being Stefan Castle. Uh, I don't, I, do you think Trey Jones will have any issue coming off the bench? I, I think he'll be okay with that. Yeah, yeah, he I was okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a trooper. He's a team guy. I, I think yeah. whatever role you throw Trey, Trey Jones into, he's going to thrive in it, do his best in it. So, no, I have, I have no issues or problems with Trey Jones coming off the bench. And, yeah, I do think that Chris Paul will start, you know, majority of the season, and mm-hmm. hopefully we do turn it over to Castle. But one thing about Chris Paul, and we saw it last year, is he can play off the ball, too. He can, mm-hmm. you know, he played with Steph Curry last year off the ball mm-hmm. just fine. And he's such an, a smart basketball player that I think, just like we said about Trey Jones, whatever role we throw Chris Paul into, he's going to be a star at it. He's going to thrive in it. And mm-hmm. I think – Wherever it is, it's going to be extremely beneficial to the Spurs. And I know mm-hmm. you were saying, like, maybe we ship him out midway through, do him a solid. If he's not, you know, ring chasing, like pressing that he wants mm-hmm. to go somewhere, I'd really try to sign Chris Paul for a few more years. So he, we can really, really 
get, you know, all that knowledge mm-hmm. that he's got in his game and transfer it over to our young players. I think that's the most beneficial thing Chris Paul can do for this team is just his guidance and his teaching to Castle particularly, but it'll trickle down, you know, amongst the whole team. And I think having Chris Paul, I don't think there's a better mentor or guide for Castle right now. I mean, we saw what uh, just Chris Paul's short time at OKC helped transform Shea into. And I think um, Stefan Castle, he's got the same, you know, body type. He's got the same, you know, uh, Shea was not a great shooter coming into the league, but he started his work, became a great mid-range scorer, and then transferred that out onto the three. And I could definitely see Chris Paul taking Castle under his wing for the next two or three seasons and creating the next, you know, point God that has come from the Chris Paul, you know, mentorship tree. So I really want, I'm really into that right now, that idea of keeping Chris Paul along for the ride for a few seasons. And who knows, maybe by then we're, you know, chomping at the bit yeah. of championship ourselves because of what Chris Paul has done for the team. And then he doesn't have to go ring chasing so we can bring him mm-hmm. along for that ride as well. So yeah, I, I'm definitely all about Chris Paul to the Spurs. I think that was an insanely uh, mm-hmm. heady move by Brian Wright. Not a insane splash in terms of talent, but mm-hmm. the basketball IQ and mentorship that he can bring is really mm-hmm. second to no one in the NBA, especially to guards. So I think it was an extremely heady move by Brian Wright and another move where Brian Wright's really thinking down the road because mm-hmm. will Chris Paul have an impact on this team this year? Yeah. I mean, we're going to be better because of him right away, but he's not getting us to where we want to be. And that was never the, the, uh, the point of this move. This was a move that was to continue the build within the team. And what Chris Paul can bring to the team off the court is just going to play tremendous dividends going down the line and i'm super excited to see what what this becomes yeah me me too i'm excited for uh spurs i I think adding cp3 was a very wise move uh because part of the rebuild is having these kids to learn and last season again no knock on osman or or mcdermott but they didn't have that truly tested war tested in playoffs and whatnot uh, on the roster and i think cp3 helps speed up that rebuilding phase is mm-hmm. learning from somebody who's been there done that and then some and i think chris paul does that as well now as far as him starting on opening night yeah i, I think that's what's going to happen more than likely but i really really need to see uh castle take the keys eventually and who knows what if the spurs find out that hey maybe he's a better off guard you know okay well good then you got cp3 there you know and you got trey jones and you'll be okay as well mm-hmm. and much like in the same vein as wimby he found out that, yeah, Wimby, I know you say you don't pigeonhole you as a five, but guess what? You're a five, and this is where you excel. And maybe that could happen for Castle. But, yeah, it's exciting times and ahead. And, by the way, the Spurs have officially signed Castle to mm-hmm. a contract the team just announced during this recording. He is Jack Thompson. Make sure to follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. By the way, ran to your dad, man. Uh, he's looking good, man. He's looking good. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, um, Jack. Before I let you go, a little nerd talk, real fast here. Uh, did you see the new for Hellboy, the new Hellboy movie? I saw screen grabs of it, but I haven't seen any sort of trailer. Is I saw the trailer? trailer. Yeah, I saw the trailer. Let me tell you right now, they're sticking to comic accurate look. He's not yoked he's not jacked like you you know just muscles bulging <laughs> everywhere he's the he has that very very gaunt face skinny neck skinny body kind of a little bit of a some love handles on him so i love that but by the way it's not even a comedy it's more like actual horror horror vibes like nice yeah like i'm pretty that. sure he'll he'll i'm pretty sure he'll do the wise cracks as he normally does but it's not leaning towards kind of campy mm-hmm. vibe it's just yeah yeah very in the vein of horror movie so nice I can't I'm, wait. I'm gonna check the trailer out right now when we get off yeah definitely he is jack thompson again make sure to follow him on next at jack underscore thompson 33 give us the give we need the goggles we need where the goggles they're the goggles see jack ah eh? we asked jack and he delivers there 
All right. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app. The list goes on and on. We'll be back tomorrow talking more silver and black. And check out Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel only on YouTube. So for Jack Thompson, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock in this episode of Locked On Spurs.